Let's do a synthesis problem. Let's propose how we can synthesize this by a Clayson condensation. There might be more than one way here. How could we synthesize this with a Clayson condensation? What starting materials would we need? You need um, hexanes. I can, you can break. Okay, there's two. I think there's two ways you can make it. You can either break. Um, That's terrific. So you put in the squiggles, and you saw that the Clayson condensation could have formed this bond or this bond. Let's actually draw both of those. That was a good analysis. You didn't need this type. This is hard for me. The way I would do this is I would say, well, let's start by assuming that this was the electrophilic carbonyl. If this was the electrophilic carbonyl, then this must have been the alpha carbon that attacked it. And if this is the alpha carbon that attacked here, this is the bond that was formed by the Clayson condensation. On the other hand, now let's suppose that this was the electrophilic carbonyl. Well, if this was the electrophilic carbonyl, then this would still be the alpha carbon that attacked it. And then we should squiggle this bond. This is the bond that was formed. And now we should be able to do retrosynthesis and show what the starting fragments would be in both cases. Let's write that down. But I didn't think your analysis was exactly right. So you've got your CH3. some difficulty here. I think the thing that would help you is putting in these actual symbols. Star and asterisk here, and asterisk and star here. So going up to here, I'm going to use the redraw and modify technique. Okay, I think the redraw and modify technique is very helpful here. <clears throat> so I've simply redrawn the products with the asterisks and the stars. Now, since I've got this bond squiggled, this is the bond that didn't exist in the starting material. So I'm going to erase this bond that I've got squiggled. Well, what did this star used to be connected to? It must have had an L group. I guess you can kind of use any L group that you want in this case. I think you put it in an ethyl group. I have the OET. Yeah, an ethoxide group. That seems reasonable. That's this could just be how they did it in the book. Yeah, this is a common type of L group to use here. But O, o methyl would work, O propyl would work. The key thing is that we want this to be an ester, because a Clayson condensation is when you attack an ester. And I guess we don't have to do any uh, adjustments to the alpha carbon over here. The only difference between this alpha carbon and this alpha carbon is this has um, one more hydrogen than this one does over here, but it's a hidden hydrogen, so we don't even, even need to draw it. So I think the redraw and modify technique is very useful this. So the thing that I think you might not have realized is it's still all one molecule. So I think you actually, saw, you actually saw this from the start. This would be one molecule. But if we use redraw and modify, that forces us to see that this is still all one molecule in this case. And then I can use redraw and modify for this picture down here. Well, now I should erase this bond. This, now this is the bond that's being formed. 
Now, I don't actually have to draw anything else in this alpha carbon because it just has another extra hidden hydrogen, which we don't necessarily need to draw. Uh, but this now should have been the ester. So I'll just put in that L group there. And how do you know which one is preferable? Because like, I did want a problem in the book that was almost exactly like this. And I first drew the one that was all one molecule. But the answer was two separate molecules. And it said that one's preferred because you prefer to start from two small molecules instead of one big one. But then I did another one, and they had the long one. So like, I don't know. You did another one where they said that the one big molecule was better yeah. than two small molecules? Yeah. Uh, did they say why? No, it was just like the answer. OK. Um, uh, do you have that with you? No. All right. I you, uh, uh, yeah, so well, I'd have to take a look at it. Generally speaking, the point of a synthesis is you want to make a complicated molecule out of simple molecules. Mm -hmm. um, so the point is, it's very likely that you, don't have, you might not happen to have this sitting in a jar on a shelf in your lab. This is too complicated for you to have it sitting in a jar on a shelf. And this is still too complicated for it to be sitting in a jar on your shelf. But these are both much simpler molecules. There's a very good chance that you've got some cyclohexanone lying around or that you can easily buy it. Um, and this is a little bit more complicated, but still not that complicated. So in general, I, I would go with the two simpler molecules is better, just because it's easier to obtain those. So I don't know why the other um, situation said the one big molecule was better. I'd have to, I'd have to look at the specific example. Uh, OK. So again, um, for the most part, we did that well. But if you have any trouble, again, the keys are, first of all, remember that for retrosynthesis, uh, I would recommend that you actually draw the product on the right side of your piece of paper. So you can put the starting materials on the left. Unfortunately, um, organic chemists like to do it with the retrosynthesis era with the product over here. But we've talked about how that's confusing. So actually put the product on the right-hand side of your paper and use a normal arrow. I really encourage you, if you're having any trouble, to put in these alphas and asterisks. And here, since there were two possible retrosyntheses, I just used lots of paper and did it twice with two separate sets of alpha symbols and asterisks. And this is a situation where the redraw and modify technique, I think, is really helpful. We just redrew the products, and then we erased the bonds that wouldn't have existed in the starting materials and put in the bonds that would have. Uh, so what would have been a good base to add here? Since you decided to use this L group, this would be a good base to match it. And this. And actually, um, that actually would not have been a complete answer. If we wanted to. We'd have to add both the base and then the protonator because we were trying to form the protonated form. OK. All right, so you should definitely do some more practice with Clayson condensation syntheses because that'll probably be on the test as well. But again, I think you've already made some good progress. Again, if you have any trouble, Put in the alpha symbols and the asterisks and use the redraw and modify technique. All right, can't get away from the placement condensations. All right, now we can go to what you can do with the 1,3 dicarbonyls.